Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship at St. Paul Lutheran. Uh, Today is the sixth Sunday of Easter, and we are glad that you get to be here and share in this resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and hear his word for you today. Uh, A few announcements here, um, especially regarding the prayers we'll, we'll send to our God who listens later in the service. Uh, Jairus Rensink's father passed away this week, Uh, so our thoughts and prayers will be with Jairus and Darren and Nicole and the rest of the whole family uh, during this time. Also, Leroy Tiedemann's sister-in-law, Kim of Orange City, has been hospitalized with ovarian cancer, so she will be in our prayers later in the service as well. Uh, Next Sunday, another announcement here is Mother's Day also. So we in this congregation are going to celebrate that, and uh, we will celebrate Mother's Day and enjoy muffins with mom and uh, with everyone. It's not only moms who are invited, uh, but muffins with mom are going, that is going to take place after our worship service next Sunday. So after the service, uh, that will take place, and we hope that all of you can be there for that. Uh, I could be forgetting something, but if there is nothing on your minds that you want to raise or give attention to, I think we'll begin then. We'll rise and begin with the call to worship. We gather under the sign of the cross and in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Jesus said, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Do not let your hearts be troubled. David wrote, I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. The Lord is our light and salvation. The Lord is our stronghold. Who shall we fear? We worship the God who gathers us into his embrace in the day of trouble. We are safe. We are secure. Amen. Our opening hymn is What Wondrous Love Is This? It is 385 in the Green Hymnal.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy and almighty God, how wonderful it is that you would deign to call us into relationship through your Son, and he would call us friend. Enable us by your Holy Spirit to love you so fully that we love you above all things. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Kids, come on up for the children's chat. Good morning. Oh yeah, we got to keep practicing this one. When I say good morning, I suppose, what would you say back to me? Kind of like when I say the Lord be with you, and then they respond, and you do too, and also with you. So good morning to you. Oh, I love it. I love it. It almost sounded like I was making you do that, and I guess I kind of was. Uh, sometimes it'll just come out with joy, though, in your good morning. Um, <laughs> you guys are so cool. Um, now, uh, have you ever smelled the color nine? I used to listen to a song with Leah sometimes, and the title of the song was Smell the Color Nine. Have you ever smelled the color, color nine? No, why not? Because you can't smell it. You can't smell the color nine. Actually, can you smell a color? No. You can look at a color. And wait a second, is nine... <laughs> Is nine a color? No, it's not. So that whole phrase right there doesn't make a lot of sense to us. And there's a reason. You looked at me with such a puzzled look. Now, sometimes God's ways are just different than our ways, and we don't completely understand them. 
But I'm going to tell you something that in faith, you know what he's doing. You like purple, and that is a good color for you to see. Yes, blue is my favorite. Yeah, the rainbow. Isn't this wonderful? All the things that God gives us, so many good gifts, even the colors to observe. Sometimes we don't get it. I'm going to read a few verses from Psalm 98. And the reason they are, these people are overjoyed comes earlier. The Lord has made his salvation known and revealed his righteousness to the nations. Now you have received that word. And what comes out is joy. You know what God is doing. Even though you might not get it, it's very good. It's so good. So I'm going to read a few uh, verses here. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Burst into jubilant song with music. Now many of you are going to sing for our congregation next week. Isn't that right? You guys are on the schedule. And you'll make music. The next verse says this, Make music to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the sound of singing, with trumpets and the blast of the ram's horn. Shout for joy before the Lord, the King. Remember what the King has done for us? The Lord has saved you and me. I'll I'll read on. Let the sea resound and everything in it, the world and all who live in it, Now get this, let the rivers clap their hands. Let the rivers clap their hands? Elias, you looked at me like, what? Let the mountains sing together for joy. Let them sing before the Lord. Now we might not get that, but that's what God is up to. And even though we don't get it, how uh, mountains could do such a thing, How rivers could clap hands. I didn't know the river had hands. Did you? They don't have hands, hands, do they? But the Lord, what he says, goes. And it is such a wonderful thing to read about. Near the end of the Bible, uh, the Lord says, this is Jesus, saying this, seated on the throne, I am making everything new. Rivers to clap their hands. He is restoring all of creation, including you, to be exactly what you're supposed to. We don't know how exactly this works, but this is what our Lord is doing. Okay, I think Romans 8 verse 21 offers us something else here that describes what the Lord is up to. Creation itself. Now that's you, that's mountains, that's rivers too. Will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the glorious freedom of the children of God. That's pretty neat. Are you a child of God? He is making everything new, and it is such a good word. We can clap our hands and sing out next week, or even today, with songs of joy and thanksgiving. Don't you think so? I think so. We could even say good morning, and a lot of joy could come out. We'll see, maybe. So good morning to you. All right. (laughs) Joy. It's coming. The Lord is making everything new. And uh, this is something to be very thankful for. So why don't we send a prayer of thanks to the Lord, our God. And you can repeat after me. Dear Lord, we thank you for your promise to make all things new. Amen. All right. It's good to see you.
Our first lesson for the sixth Sunday after Easter comes to us from the New Testament the book of Acts, the 10th chapter, uh, beginning at the 34th verse. And so we read these words in Jesus' name. And then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts men from every nation who fear him and do what is right. You know the message God sent to his people of Israel, telling the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is the Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, and after the baptism that John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. And he was not seen by all people, but by the witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he arose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the good one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testified about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished at the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. And then Peter said, Can anyone keep these people from being baptized with water? They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And then they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. Here ends the reading. Our responsive reading this morning is Psalm 98. I will read the odd verses and the congregation will respond with the even verses. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Burst into jubilant song with music. Make music to the Lord with the harp and with the harp and the sound of singing. Let the sea resound and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Let the rivers clap their hands, let the mountains sing together for joy. Let them sing before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in its righteousness and the peoples with equity. Our second reading this morning comes to us from the New Testament book of 1 John, the fifth chapter, beginning then with the fifth or first verse. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. This is how we know that we love the children of God, by loving God and carrying out his commands. This is the love for God to obey his commands. And his commands are not burdensome, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came by the water and blood, Jesus Christ. He did not come by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who testifies, because the Spirit is the truth. For these are the th three that testify, 
the spirit, the water, and the blood. And the three are in agreement. Here ends the reading. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel, according to St. John, the 15th chapter. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command, love each other. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. We praise you, Christ, our Lord and God. Please be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I can't see this, of course, but I do wonder what the text, this passage, just did to you. What do you think of John's language of love? It's a different dialect, isn't it? At times, maybe even throughout the whole thing, you'll hear it as a series of imperatives, conditional statements in which the true producer of love is you. That you will be the determinant of whether or not God the Father and His Son Jesus will love you back. And isn't that how our lives and our relationships in this old world work? The language John uses here might be the same language that Mark, Paul, or Luther use. But there is a different accent to it, and it's quite frankly terrifying for many. Now, why is that? Well, that could take a bit to unpack, because at first glance, it makes sense that if we love Jesus and keep his commands to love one another, that will surely beckon him to reciprocate the favor, to judge us worthy of being called his friend. This is a clear demand, a straightforward command. Everything that you would expect from a master or a boss. And now you can go and get the job done. This is what the Christian is supposed to do to be obedient to God's word. So you might hear the command to love one another and you attempt to do it and then ring that bell for Jesus. We are wired, wired to look at our own contribution to achieve to demonstrate some agency in the love department, to be the subject of the verb, to manipulate the pieces and control the variables. So what will that love look like, do you suppose? 
Well, in your civic life, you might get behind social and political movements for the greater good. You might serve your community by getting them to think and vote like you do. In your job, you'll go the extra mile, put in the extra effort. You'll impress others with your positivity and your willingness to be a team player. You acknowledge, too, that your greatest job is the one you have at home. And there isn't anything you wouldn't do for your spouse and your kids. Your drive to be the best parent you can be involves driving kids to new heights and lofty expectations in academics, music, and athletics. And it literally driving your kids from one event and practice to another. Because you won't let your kids get left behind. You've got to enact your will and make the impossible possible for them. And then you've got this Christian life to uphold, a huge burden of responsibility, rules to follow, wholeheartedly too, gladly, They're written on your heart and your mind, and you're going to put your soul into it too, don't you? You look at your own contributions, make sure the amounts are generous, and then you've got those scripture verses to memorize, your prayers of thanks to send in all circumstances, your pure doctrine to defend and your service in groups to perform and dedicate yourself to, your part to play in the life of the church. All of this achieved so that you could responsibly love others, just as Jesus commands in the Gospel of John, so that complete joy and love can abound here. Can you do all of that? Have you completed it? Can you ring the bell and say, all right, it's done. How will Jesus judge your love? Do you wonder about that? If you got behind the right social movement, if God will be impressed with your brand of love, Do you wonder how he will view your impressive works at work, especially if they were kind of motivated by a boost to your earning prospects or your reputation? Do you question whether your efforts at home were for your kid's joy or for your own image? And what about all those times you didn't volunteer at church or in the community when you hid from your responsibility to love? What if you got sidetracked and you were tempted to stray away from your relationship with your spouse for a more exciting one? What if the complete joy wasn't achieved even with all your efforts. And you became seduced by an immediate, although false, and incomplete form of joy somewhere out there. What if all you were working towards got interrupted and destroyed? How complete now is your love? How good are your good works At this point, and even at your best, there is outward rebellion or despair. Is that what Jesus is after here? Your decision to love, your offer of conditional friendship, is that what he's after? Is that what he's saying? Here is Jesus with these words, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. 
with summer coming, it's almost pool season around here. Observe how adults and kids are in the water. Us adults tend to get in really slow. We're self-conscious, aware of what we look like, I suppose. Who's there? Who isn't? We're all concerned about the temperature, always a little bit too cold. And with all of our agency and knowledge, we navigate the, we, the way of least splashes on our half-hearted way into the water, tracking time, too, until that next whistle. We're hyper-aware of the rules and whether our kids are obeying them. And we're going to use our limited time to teach the right techniques and swimming strokes that will benefit the, these kids when they're older. And then there are the kids. We have one who bursts into the water and just can't get enough of it. Doesn't know when or how to time the breathing in or out, when to close the eyes or plug the nose, just attacks the water without abandon, can't wait to feel it all over and then wildly dive in again. We have another, too, who was remarkably buoyant in the water when she was young, in a perfect state of peace, content to let herself just be, floating gently on her back, nothing but her face above the water's surface. There was chaos all around her, but pure tranquility. She was immersed in the water all around. No concept of time or life outside of the water. water. She was just soaking. When Jesus says, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you, he means it. He's connected to you by the love of God, and you are the branch of the vine, Jesus Christ, the word he had just declared in this 15th chapter. Now remain in my love, he says, soak in it. I'm giving this to you. But we tend to question it. I mean, why, Jesus? How, how could you? How could you Call me your friend. Don't you know me? What I've done and failed to do? And Jesus here is responding and saying, Oh yes, I'm giving you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. That's why. You can give up your fight and your self-focused inspection. This is me giving you a joy that is complete. Soak in that. Now, was that right there Jesus' move, or was there something special about these disciples and their love? Were they able to love one another as Jesus loved them? Were they able to choose love and fulfill Christ's commands? Were they finally the ones who could lay their, down their lives for their friend? Are you? No. No. This is spoken to the disciples after the Last Supper on the way to the Garden of Gethsemane. Spoiler alert, 2,000 years later now, they don't love God in that garden. They refuse to lay down their lives. They go to sleep and then betray him. They run away like scared children. They run to and hunker down in their own incomplete works like you and I do. And away from Jesus. Their sins... Yours and mine were on Jesus, and we left him to die. That's what we've done. 
you left him nailed to the cross. So where is our relationship going then? Jesus calls the deserting disciples his friends. You, picture yourself his servant, the one who'd earn the wage, deserve the master's good graces with your acts of love, and you might have thought you were swimming too, or at least treading water, but on your own, you're heading in the wrong direction. But Jesus calls you his friend now. How is that? Well, what I have heard from my Father, Christ says, I have declared, preached to you. That's right. The favor of the Father for the Son, Jesus Christ, has been given to you. And he says this, You did not choose me, but I chose you. You think you're mature and strong and able to exert your influence and will? Sorry, you're the dependent baby here. You don't get to put your stamp on this, yes or no, approve or deny. You didn't choose Christ and rise up to a state of complete obedience and faith. You don't get to produce fruit to present to your master for inspection. And you don't make the move to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You don't make the choice that would determine heaven or hell, life or death, salvation or damnation. You aren't Jesus' friend because you were able to stand on your own apart from the vine and then pinch and pull on the fruit until it came out. You aren't Jesus' friend because you acted like one. You are Jesus' friend because that's what he called you. You didn't apply. You were appointed the fruit comes out. And for the branch, it's like an accident. That which courses through the vine supplies everything needed for the pears and the plums and the peaches to come out. The fruit comes out. And it's not a burden, but a joy that is complete. You're soaking in love that Jesus poured out for you. He laid down his life for you, even when you wouldn't or couldn't do the same for Jesus. The fruit comes out. It grows. And this is the beautiful teaching of Christ. And it's been opposed by the church itself ever since. But it's been revived for you and for me, even by Martin Luther in the Heidelberg Disputation 506 years ago, almost to the day, the authorities wanted him to recant everything. He couldn't. And then he hit them with this, the last of 28 world-changing theses. The love of God does not find, but creates that which is pleasing to it. God does this growing, and he did the choosing. He said, I'll take that one. This one is mine. And it was you. Amen. We're going to sing our hymn of the day now. It is 272 in the green hymnal, Abide with me.
I'll ask you to rise if you're able. Let us join together in confessing the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. God of all good gifts, we praise your name and thank you for the good gifts you give us each day. In this Easter season, we especially thank you for the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ. May we live each and every day focused on your love for us. In times of trial, help us to see your loving kindness, trusting that you who began a good work in us will be faithful to complete it. Lord, in your mercy. Holy God, guide and protect our military service personnel as they serve our country and keep us free from tyranny. Keep them from harm and bring them safely home when their mission has been completed. Watch over their families while they are away from home. Lord, in your mercy, loving Lord, you are the source of all peace and healing for our lives. Grant us peace no matter our circumstances. Grant us your healing power, whether we are ill in body, mind, or spirit. We pray especially for Jairus Rensink and family on the passing of his father, Leroy Tiedemann's sister-in-law, Kim, and the rest of her family and friends and others who will care for her. For Virginia Lineman to be supplied with energy to take on each day. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary. For in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, And poured it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you and all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All who are baptized have been instructed properly and trust God's word are welcome to the Lord's Supper where our Lord is truly present, offering his gifts of forgiveness and eternal life. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Come, for all is ready. You may be seated.
Please stand and receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Our sending hymn is Blessed Assurance. <laughs>